Good morning, Vineyard family. This week, the devotions are about the redeemed have peace with God. And I want to start by saying when we get these really large topics like this, I have a really hard time deciding what to talk about, right? There's there's so much there. So I kind of mull it over and pray about it for the week and um, just end up sharing what I feel like uh, God is consistently highlighting to me. So I'm going to share three points today that I feel like God has uh, consistently brought back to my mind um, as what he would want me to share about this morning and talking about how we have peace with God. And the first is Jesus. Jesus is our peace. Uh, Romans 5, 1 says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only one that brings us peace with God. He is the way and the truth and the life. We have no peace with God apart from Jesus. And I thought about the bridge illustration where God is on one side of the canyon and people are on the other side of the canyon, right? And our sin and our disobedience uh, separates us and Jesus makes that bridge. So it's like the wall and then Jesus is the bridge and it makes a cross, kind of a visual symbol of how the cross restores our relationship with God. It rebuilds our connection with God. And in that sense, um, Christ is our, he is our peace. He's bringing peace to that relationship. So that's probably the most crucial point that I would say about having peace with God is our salvation through Jesus. Second, peace with God should lead to peace with ourselves and peace with other human beings. And for an example, I think a classic is looking at Mary and Martha. So looking at the story of Mary and Martha from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 41. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things but only one is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. We uh, used to have a bunch of children's Bibles and one of them had an illustration that was my favorite of Mary and Martha. And there were a lot of funny things about the illustrations in this Bible, one of which being the women were all sort of dressed like 50s housewives in addition to like sort of having like a Middle Eastern garment on, they'd have like a pearl necklace and pearl earrings and like a very 50s hairstyle. So that was funny. Um, so Mary and Martha kind of looked like that. But in the illustration for Mary and Martha, Mary's sitting on the floor, you know, looking kind of like dreamily up at Jesus, just really chill, taking it all in. And Martha is like peeking her head out of the kitchen and she has this look on her face like, like every woman knows that look and has had that look when they're stressed about people coming over, getting ready for anything. And um, I call the stress face, you know, she's just doing like a classic, a classic uh, stress face. And it just captures it perfectly, right? Mary is at peace. She's at peace. You know, she's listening to Jesus, she's taking it in, and she's at peace. And Martha is just the opposite. She's frazzled, she's worried, she's upset. And uh, 
she's actually bossing Jesus around telling him what to do. But the bottom line is we having peace is better. Having peace is what we're called to as Christians. Even if we're that busy person that likes to be getting everything done, uh, I don't think it's what Martha's doing is wrong, but the way she's doing it is wrong. She's not allowing Christ's peace into her spirit to reside in her and to have her focus be on her relationship with him rather than on all the other things she's doing. And the third thing I wanted to share is to leave you with a question. So we talk about having peace a lot and that having peace is a really good thing. But God brought this idea to me that there are things in our lives that we make peace with that we should not be making peace with because they're not good things um, or they're not the best for us. So, you know, this recently came up in my life in that uh, there's a physical issue that I've had. I remember it starting when I was 25 for sure. And um, so almost 25 years, decades, I've had this, this issue. Um, never talked to the doctor about it. I just completely made peace with it. And I'm very proactive with medical things. Um, I, you know, see the doctor about lots of stuff. I, I, you know, it's not an issue of me not liking doctors or not being proactive. Generally, I, I am very much that way. Um, but with this particular issue, I just had it in my mind that if I told them what was going on, they would like mock me, that they would just be like, whatever, you know, don't be a loser, just take a Tylenol and you'll be fine. Like, I just really had like a shame kind of fear of like complaining about this issue that I had. So, um, and have had, you know, lots of prayer about it over the years and kind of approached it that way, but never talked to a doctor about it. So, uh, because of my husband's encouragement, um, I did do that this week and they were like hundred percent, this is what you have going on with you. And guess what? There's things that could treat it and help me feel a lot better and not have this problem anymore. So, you know, good news relief is on the way. Sad news, I've lived with something for decades that I didn't really have to live with. Um, I mean, there might not be a magic cure, but, but there might be that I just never tried. So that to say, that's the question to think about. Um, are there things in our life, you know, that's a physical example, but emotionally, spiritually, that we've made peace with, that we've just kind of let have a home, have a place in our lives that God would really like to push out and say, you know, this is not what I have for you. So let's pray. And I'm going to pray John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And Lord, help us to abide in you. You say when we abide in you, we will bear much fruit. But apart from you, we can do nothing. Thank you for being our peace with God. Thank you for giving us salvation, Jesus. Thank you for walking through us in this life helping us to have peace with ourselves and peace with others, Lord. And where there's things that we should not be at peace with in our lives, bring those to mind and through your Holy Spirit, give us the courage to make changes. In Jesus' name, amen.
Tell the world of 